Hi, and you're very welcome to the third episode of the Women's National League podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie. I'm Brefney Early, and once again, I'm joined by my co-host, Stephanie Roach. Stephanie, you're very welcome back to the program. Hey, Brefney, good to be back. And of course, another exciting week in women's football across the country. Uh, loads of preseason games for us to have a little bit of a look at, and two very exciting guests later on. We're going to be talking to people from Shell's and at loan later in the show, but more on that in a little while. Steph, let's start with your own game. You played at loan on Friday evening. A, a tough encounter, bad weather, which seems to be the trademark of the week. Talk us through uh, your, I suppose, your second last preseason game of the season. Yeah, it was a good run out for us, I have to say. Um, at loan made it difficult for us. The weather definitely, particularly in the second half, kind of affected the game completely. I think it was just next to impossible to play the last I remember I asked your referee how long was left and he said eight minutes and he goes but if this keeps up it'll only be one so he was kind of ready to get off the pitch as fast as he can as well but yeah look good run out for us we've come up against a couple of very very good defensive teams in DLR and now at loan and kind of giving us that kind of I suppose look into how we're going to break down teams because sometimes teams will sit in against females and it's about kind of trying to figure out our best way to play against teams like that. But I think Athlone were, were re- really good, really improved on last year. Um, I think they had similar kind of traits to the way they played last year, but they seem to bring it all together a little bit better this year. So look excited to see how they get on this season. They've obviously brought in quite a few new players. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on as the season uh, progresses. And as I said, a very, very good game for us. Of course, it's um, uh, it's a couple of games you've played now. It's the first one we've got a score for. What's the, the reason behind that? Of course, you won this game on Friday night 1-0, but you never actually told us over the last couple of weeks how your other games went in terms of results. How do they fare out? Yeah, well, I think most clubs, to be fair, a lot of the clubs don't really put up the final score as well. I kind of haven't seen a lot of them, but I think it's just a case of, it's not about the results. It's, it's pre-season. It's about getting as many games under your belt as possible. I think it's about getting fitness. It's about... I suppose looking at new players, gelling players together, like we have a lot of young young players coming in and, and James is hoping to try and give them a bit of an opportunity to play. So the best chance to see them is in pre-season. So I think for us personally, it's not about the results because we know when it comes to, to starting the season that that's when we have to win the games and we have to get the, the results that we need. But in terms of the, the result at the moment, it isn't the biggest kind of, the biggest thing from the games. It's all about getting ourselves ready for that first game of the season. And that's against Wexford, which will be a big game for us. Of course, yeah, you should consider it a career in politics because you answered that really <laughs> without actually telling us the answer. Uh, some of the games that took place over the last couple of days, we'll hear a little bit more about some of them later on in the show. Uh, Athlone and Galway met last weekend or last Wednesday, uh, an awful night in Athlone. I think the wind was up, the rain was up, uh, all the goals were all into the one goal, bar one maybe, uh, and all from about 35 yards, a couple from set pieces, direct from a corner, free kicks, that sort of stuff. Uh, the keepers might not be overly enamoured with their performances, but I think given the conditions, uh, these kind of nights happen, unfortunately, for all the final score there in that game. Uh, also, again, at out uh, three times over the weekend, the one little defeat to yourselves, and then a one-all game against Bowes yesterday, as, as we speak. It's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, they played that. Uh, in terms of other games, Cork made the journey up to Dublin. They played DLR Waves in Abbottstown over the weekend, 4-0 to DLR there. It looks like a fairly comprehensive victory for them. I think they'll be happy with that result. A uh, good performance by all accounts from those who are at the game. Of course, all these taking place behind closed doors. And the final result I have uh, is one we might get into sooner rather than later on the show, and that's Shells and Galway. And they met on uh over the weekend, and it was a 2-1 victory for Galway. I suppose we might just uh, jump in. Before we, we go to our first guest, any of those stand out to you? Or again, are you just going to say it's it's all about the performance and you can't really read too much into it? Well, I think everyone knows it's about what happens within the season, isn't it? I think you can get shock results in pre-season when people are trying different things. But I think the one that stands out is DLR for an ale against Cork. I think that surprises me. I think we spoke highly of the DLR when Catherine was on last week and I do see them being a really good team this year, but I thought maybe Cork would be as well. So for them to beat Cork 4-0, that's probably the biggest shock of, of preseason so far. But again, it, you don't know what the teams were put out. It could have been Cork trying out different systems or different things. So it's as I said, it's it's all about what happens when the season starts and when the points are up for grabs, you know? Absolutely. Well, let's get on to that first game that we're going to talk about, Shells and Galway. And we're going to be joined by one of the Shelburne players, uh, Rebecca Cray. Here's what we had to chat about earlier in the day. 
With all your clubs more or less in action this week, I think Wexford and Bowes didn't have a game over the weekend, but everybody else had a game. One of those was the clash between Shells and Galway. And one person who'd be a little bit disappointed maybe at how it finished up is uh, Shells player Rebecca Cray. And she joins us now. Rebecca, you're very welcome. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. And uh, how's all in the Shells camp after the weekend? Disappointed with the result or happy enough just to get out and get a good run out uh, against Galway? I think a bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think everyone knows Galway are a good outfit, you know, and obviously going going uh, to play them is always a is a tough day. Um but yeah, look, always disappointed to lose a game, you know, but as I said, when I said to the girls after the game, it's it's pretty much a case of getting the minutes in the tank before the main event I suppose, you know, um that's the main thing. We still got a few new players, younger players coming in, still trying to gel. Um yeah, so look, a bit of both, but look, we know what we have to work on and we we'll get another game in before the, the start of the league and, and see how it goes, yeah. Yeah, I suppose it was a, a tight enough run into the season last year. I know it, there was a fairly decent point margin in at the end, but it did all boil down to that one game uh, in Piemont at the end of the season. The Piemont just edged it out on the night, but you did have your chances What's the hopes for this year going forward? Has there been a bit of recruitment? Uh, we spoke on the show before about some of the new arrivals into the, the playing squad, but also a new gaffer on the sideline, Noel King, former Republic of Ireland uh, women's and under-21 men's manager uh, on the sideline. How much of a difference are those new arrivals going to make to your squad? Major, yeah. You obviously touched on last season. I was I was elsewhere myself, but um, yeah, I watched that game and, and look, Steph, I'm sure now throughout the whole season, it was, it was pretty, pretty tight, you know, and Look, it just came down to that that final game. But as always, like with Shells, you know, our, our main aim is to to win, you know, and, and win as much as possible. Um, I think with the new recruits we've got in, we've we've got we've got great signings in, you know, we've got obviously Saoirse Noonan, who everyone knows, you know, the name speaks for itself itself. Um hopefully she'll be an addition in front in front of goal, you know, just to have that out and out goal score. Um obviously Rachel Baines came in as well with uh Amanda Budden and look there's there's a lot there already you know I think the re-signings are, are also a, a great thing to have we've kept a lot of players um, and again the big one being Kinger um, I think Steph knows, knows Kinger obviously since you know a long long time ago but he's a great addition to have he's a wealth of experience both from playing and obviously management um, he's a kind of manager that you want to go out there and play for you know he kind of gets that out you, you, you feel huge going out into a pitch and, and even training like it's such a positive atmosphere and there's a great buzz around it again so look I'm excited you know and um, I, I know the whole squad are excited to get going and and look hopefully we can we can get a bit more silverware yeah see how it goes I've seen on your Instagram the other day you put up um, a picture of yourself Pearl Noel and Rachel I think it was the band they're back together yeah. how's it been being back with the girls obviously I know myself and one of the older players within the group and I think coming back to play with the likes of Anya and Karen and players who I played with throughout the years is for me personally kind of brought me back to where I want to be does that make sense I think I'm starting to play with a bit more kind of confidence and enjoying football for myself again after being away do you feel like you've obviously had a couple of injuries you've been away you went to Australia you were at Bowes last season and now as you said the band is back together do you kind of feel like you're getting back to your old self are you enjoying kind of being back with the girls again yeah, no, definitely. I think that was probably one of the, the main parts of or points of me going back, you know. I kinda I'm not I'm not on the lower end of the age scale at this stage and I'll see you know, <laughs> We're not I've had it today, right? <laughs> like, no, I try my best not to I didn't before. say it, that wasn't um, me. <laughs> um but yeah, no, as you said, obviously the injuries and stuff and look, I had a little run with bows last year. It was great to get back out in the pitch again, you know, I kinda put it off and put it on the back burner for a while after the last injury. It was it just wasn't in me and I was thankful to Bowes and Sean Bourne and that to give me a, a bit of time to, to get back into the flow of it. And I think, as I said, I think to a few of the girls, look, I, I don't think I've ever left Shells, if that makes sense. You know, it just it just didn't feel right to, to not be playing with, with the girls and like the three girls, you know, I've been playing with since I'm what, 16 or something, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was it's great to get back going again. I'm, I've, I'm a little bit of a niggle at the minute, but look, that's just part of getting back into the pace of things. And yeah, it's just a great atmosphere to be around them again and, and have that little bit of, bit of banter and look, you can't, you can't beat it. Yeah, and of course, uh, I almost forgot you'd been at Bowes last year. I know you only played a handful of games towards the end of the season, but uh, how much, how important is it to kind of be back in that? Because it is your home. You've been in Rohini first and then Shells for, well, a while, shall we say. I'm not going to get myself in trouble with Steph again. <laughs> um, 
it, it's nice to be back in that familiarity of it, even if you have been away for a little while. Definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it just feels like the, the place that I should be at. You know, I know I, I'm, it's going to take a bit of time to probably get back to that, that level and, and that pace. But look, it's the background staff, even, you know, the, the, the volunteers within the club, even see those familiar faces around the place. Um, you know, it does make all the difference, I think, to, to, to go into training and match days and stuff. And like say, the girls' parents, you know, obviously hopefully this year we'll get a few of them into the grounds. But those little things do do play their part, you know, and within a whole club environment and community. So it is, it's, it's great, yeah. What's different about the last time you were there? What What's improved? What's maybe the same? What's maybe not quite as, as you remember it? Um, I think there's been, a, you know, we've kind of fallen under the, the same kind of name as the men. You know, we, we dropped the women's thing, which I think was huge. Um, you know, even the Twitter pages now are, are both the same. Um, little things like that, you know, make all the difference. Um, there's such a professional atmosphere now, even down to the gear. You know, obviously, the King are coming in now. He's All he's known is maybe international, you know, setups from from his past. But um it's just that bit more like you know the, the level has stepped up a bit I think and I, I think that's down to the league as well in terms of the teams you know everyone's pushing now there's there's no way you could say yeah Piemont are going to win it this year Shells are going to win it it's an open open league you know and I think we've all had to step our game um, and obviously you know with the whole thing of, of streaming games online this year that's going to be a major a major step in, in the league and I just think you know there's a lot of players in our, in our squad who are internationals or past internationals and you just know when you're coming to train and you're, you're going into battle no matter what, you know, and, and, and that's great to have and, and to have that depth as well within the squad I think is crucial. So, yeah, just really good buzz, really positive energy and, and yeah, you just want to get, get going now. Yeah, I think it's important to know. We've actually kind of touched on that a few times over the last couple of shows of Breathney and um, about every team kind of, like you mentioned them going obviously in with the men's team kind of professionalism within the squad i think the teams in the league are really doing their best to make sure that they're in a good enough position Definitely, to make yeah. it competitive so like for me as a player playing the league and i'm sure rebecca will agree i think it's it's great to see the fei electricity coming on board now the game's being streamed because i think the team the work the teams are putting in is now kind of coming together at the right time and hopefully that can kind of provide a good kind of product for people to come and watch when the games are live on the streams i think this, league, this season's going to be the most competitive yet. Like, I think, as I said, when you mentioned the likes of Galway, Cork, Athlone, you're never going to a game expecting you're going to hammer teams. It's always going to be, I think, back in the day when we played certain teams, it was like you could stroll out and get a result, you know, that kind of way. Whereas now, I yeah. think every game we go into is competitive, which is, as I said, it's a great product now for when you have the Watch League LOI coming on, the, the streams happening, the, the big sponsors coming in and taking over, not just the men's league, but the women's league as well. We're kind of being brought along, which is... I think me as a player, anyway, I'm grateful to see that happening and hopefully long may it continue. I think it's it's all positive and as I said, hopefully it can continue and, and the league can continue to keep on growing and being more competitive. Like Yeah, one one question on that, because obviously it's been noticeable from the outside that Shells have are so much more a part of the of the club now in terms of the women's setup and the underage setup. And Shells seem to have made big strides off the pitch in terms of how they, they conduct themselves and the setup that's there. How much does it affect the women's side of the house? when the men have a bad year like last year and find themselves back in the first division again, does it affect you at all? Does it affect the mood within the whole club? To be honest with you, not really. Um, no, I think ourselves, like I think it's just been a, a mentality of, of our own, like as the women's side of things to just focus on ourselves, you know, whether that's in the league or within the club, look, it's, it's great. And we're so grateful to have the name, you know, and, and the club and the facilities that we do have. Um, and look, we obviously would love to have the men in the Premier side of things as well. Um, but look, it's it's just one of those things, you know. I think we have just been fully focused on on getting ourselves right, and we're very grateful, obviously, to the club to to bring us under their names as well, um, as a whole. But I can't say there's there's too much, you know. I suppose supporters and that obviously will will feel it more so. Um, and obviously, a lot of the volunteers that we have, you know, they're very much into the, the men's team as well. So it is disappointing for them and. And look, we're disappointed for the men as well, you know, but our full focus is is trying to maintain our position in, in the Women's National League. Yeah, I suppose one of the... Is that your question? No, 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 go on, go ahead. I was going to say, I think Shell really have fun in terms of the women's side of things. Is it being competitive for so many years now that I think is are always going to be focused on yourselves and yourselves kind of first and foremost. But I think obviously as the club, you want to kind of see the men's do well. That's all, that's all I was going to touch on, but... 
yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose my my other question for you has been, I suppose Vera Powell came out, she had a contract renewed recently and as part of that discussion and part of the media attention at that, she was asked about the signing of Saoirse to Shells, uh, given that she was so vitally important to the strength of Cork the, follow, the previous year and getting to the cup final and she spoke about how she would prefer to see players spread out across the league and I suppose someone like yourself at Bohemians maybe strengthens them a little bit as well. Um, do you do you as a player worry about any of that sort of stuff? Or do you just want to be in a team that's as competitive as possible, or does the overall strength of the league come into your equation at all? Are you just all about let's get in, let's get a, the best girls here, and we'll play here, and, and let everyone else worry about themselves. Um, look, I I'd always I always want women's football in this country to do great things, and and I'd love to see a super competitive team. I always obviously want to be playing with the best players and have the best players on my team to obviously win and, and that's that's been my kind of you know approach to, to playing football in general you know but I think to help the country and help women's football in this country it would obviously help to have you know four or five great players within each team to, to strengthen their, their whole league Um, I'm being selfish now saying I want everyone on my team you know <laughs> I want to win everything and, and all that but look you can have the best of players in any team if you're, if you're not working hard and you're not putting it in you're not going to do anything so Look, it's all, it all comes down, I think, to, to attitude and, and obviously, you know, um, I think a squad is what makes a, a, a team or, you know, a club successful. But you can see both sides of it. You know, I'd love to, to see this league grow and grow. And I think it'd be long after I'm finished that we may see the financial side of things come into it or whatever it may be, you know. But look, we're, we're making good strides and there's been some great steps, as Steph has said, with, with sponsorship and, and obviously, you know, the, the, the games online and stuff coming into play, yeah. I think well, that kind of... Sorry, Ref. I think that kind of comes down to the structure of the league. I think that's kind of out of the players' hands. Like in terms of Saoirse deciding to go and play for Shells, I'm sure in her mind she wants to go and win trophies. She wants to be involved. Yeah. Now she got to the cup final with uh, with Cork and that. But I think it's a difficult one for players to answer because unless there's a structure within the league, like I think you can see it in different leagues around the world where certain players kind of are assigned to different teams and it's made kind of a bit more fair. But unless that's kind of put in, through the structure of the league, you can't really blame players who want to go and play and, and compete and try yeah. and win at the best teams. And, and that's not a disrespect to Cork, because I think they are coming on quite a lot. But in terms of Saoirse, I think she wants to get into the national team. She's probably thinking if she wants to get into international football, she probably needs to make that step forward and be kind of seen to be winning things all the time, because that's kind of where you get noticed a little bit more. So I think it's kind of more down to the structure of the league rather than players themselves having to make that decision. I think it needs to be kind of taken out of their hands, if, if you get me. No, 100%. And that's kind of wh where I was going to go with it, because if you look at the origins of the WSL in England, where uh, there were centrally contracted players who were put into various teams to, to even out the spread, and it really has paid dividends in terms of the professionalism of that league, and it's brought all of the boats up on the tide with it, and all of the clubs have, have followed. Um, I just love to see the resources available. I, I don't know if that's realistic uh, at the moment, uh, People getting expenses is is a push for a lot of clubs. So um, it's just it's just an idea, and I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. I wasn't I wasn't trying to single anybody out for any kind of special <laughs> treatment. I completely get she's not the first. She definitely won't be the last um, to be uh, attracted to a, a successful side. So uh, that's what it is. Rebecca, you're training tonight. Um, what's the the body feeling like? You mentioned you have a bit of a niggle. Yeah, I think I might be in with the physio a bit tonight. Um, just to get myself right. I kind of the first few weeks of preseason, I. I head first I was straight in and I was, I was trying to get myself you know back with the pack but um and I have to listen to the, the body it's not what I, what it used to be 10 years ago so I'm uh, I'll be in my horror for a while I'd say and I'll do a bit then you know out on the pitch so we'll see how it goes so I'm just fully focused on trying to get God, myself to that's it that's it you know I'm just trying to get back up to that level and look it's a long long season so hopefully I'll have a part to play at some point but um, I'm sure of a few around me that'll do a good job before I do that What's the expectations on yourself? Obviously, Shells are there. It's quite clear from the outside they're there to win the league, win the cup, and to dominate this year. They really have put a lot of uh, resources into that on and off the pitch. From a personal point of view, uh, what's your hope this year? Do you have a, a target in mind in terms of appearances, in terms of results? Yeah, well, look, I kind of, I've kind of come to the conclusion, or come to the, you know, realization that look, I'm not going to probably play, you know, 90 minutes consecutively week in, week in, week out. But look, I hope to have it. A part to play you know if it comes to a point that I am Jesus I'd be delighted Um, you know my target is just to get back going again and get back on the pitch you know help the team out where I can Um, 
and yeah, as you said, like as a collective, we we want to win. Um, and look, if I can get a few goals in between there at some point, I'm sure I'll be happy. But uh, yeah, look, just to get back going again and, and get playing football again is is good for me. And as I said, just win. Just Steph might might be too happy with me saying that. But. <laughs> <laughs> the league is all about it. So it brings that level of competition as well. I'm sure you'll have a couple of encounters between now and the end of the season, on and off the pitch. No okay, doubt, thanks. Yeah. For- us the best of luck this season. Thanks Except for having me, guys. Against this <laughs> See you soon. Thanks. See you later. Uh, some talent and a, a huge experience brought back into that shell side. Uh, you must know Rebecca fairly well from playing against her and with her over the years, Steph. Yeah, I do. I know I played with Rebecca, I played against her. Um, very good player. I was actually delighted to see her coming back into the league last season uh, for both. She's a player who I think has had quite a few injuries and sometimes people don't really realise they just think maybe these players are falling away or they're a little over the game and playing anymore but I think Rebecca has been unfortunate as I said a very good player over the years and as we mentioned there I think the likes of herself Pearl, Rachel Graham, Noel Murray they're kind of players who have been around the league for a long time and I think it's important to have that experience within within the Shell squad obviously as we mentioned we don't want them playing well against us but I think she's a good attribute to have and just just happy to see her back playing within the league because I think she's she's good enough to be there, you know. Absolutely, yeah. No, she's always been there, thereabouts at the top of the, of the game over the last decade or so. So uh, I'm delighted to see her back as well. So it's uh, promises to add a little bit of extra steel to that shells midfield when she is on the pitch. At the other end of the spectrum, of course, there are, is plenty of young, exciting talent emerging from the underage ranks in the clubs in the league. And one of those players is a girl who came through the ranks at Galway, but now with Athlone for the last season. Herself and her sister have been part of that squad and they're going into their second season uh, with Athlone. And that, of course, is Kayla Brady, one half of the Brady sisters from Arva, uh, who are going to be uh, a part of that Athlone team this year. You're very welcome to the show, Kayla. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, you're more than welcome. In terms of, of I suppose, how the season's progressed and how's pre-season been for Athlone? Some new arrivals into the team? Yeah, definitely. Um, look, pre-season for us is just getting minutes into the legs and testing out new players and new positions as well. I think a positive thing that have with the new signings we have is now it's more competitive for the position. So there's one or two players for every position, I think. That gives us a good, healthy um, competition in the team now. You've done a bit of raiding in the northwest as well. I see. I know uh, you you came into uh, Sligo for a couple of sessions back a few years ago as a as a fifteen or sixteen year old with the under seventeen. You ended up in Galway, uh, but now this year there's a, a quite a Sligo Rovers feel to the squad. Roshi Malloy's in there, Mern Devaney's in there, or Aoife Harn and Amy Hyman were already there, and now her sister Catherine's joined you. Um, it's kind of got a fairly wide spread of of players in. From a geography point of view, uh, you're you're from Cavan, obviously as well. It's thrown into the middle of the whole mix. Yeah, look, we got very lucky that we're actually central, so we do have a wide spread of attraction. I say for players, um, as you mentioned, this year we got Catherine Hydman, her sister Amy's with us last year, and then we have Roshi Malloy and Murren and um, Devani, which is a great signing for us this season. Yeah, I saw some of the highlights of your game last week uh, with Galway. It looked like the worst night to be out playing a football match. For all, it ended up, I think every goal bar one was from about 35 yards, though. Um, what was it like to play in a game like that? <laughs> I actually wasn't playing. I have a little niggle at the moment, so I wasn't playing. But yeah, I was watching it there and I didn't envy the girls. It sounds like it's got two bad nights then, because when you played us the other night, it was absolutely lashing rain and windy <laughs> the worst night possible for a game of football so obviously at Lone are being struck with the bad nights and the bad days for matches but uh <laughs> what i have to say is like i think obviously played against us last season um and i think what you mentioned it there in your own kind of your own words i think it's if you can see you can see there's a bit more comp- competition because you were so solid against us and it seemed like everybody was so worked up and wanted to do well within the game and i think that obviously comes with with kind of the competition to say for places, you've got players in every position kind of fighting for it. And um, going forward this season, who are you looking forward to seeing most? Do you think there's any player who who might stick out a little bit more than others? Um, I think it's going to be an exciting year for Myrne Devaney. As I previously mentioned, she came through the ranks with Sligo and she's an underage international and it's her first year playing senior football. 
And I just think she's such a talent and it's gonna she's definitely gonna be one to watch in the league this year. Yeah, definitely watch we, we played it home base Irish session recently actually she played in the game with us against Shells and then she played against us a female but yeah really really good player very good midfielder gets around the pitch and makes it difficult so I am actually looking forward to seeing how she gets home herself she scored two good goals in that game last week as well one where she almost seemed to be uh on our on our just sliding along the ground while she hit it from about 35 yards I uh, found the back of the net as well so yeah she, I've been keeping an eye on her she's obviously a good Leitrim woman uh, but uh, I'm sure Stephanie there's a good Leitrim woman in your squad that'll <laughs> a kick or two on the on the left back position there with Derville Byrne and um, in terms of your own experience Kayla you've obviously you came through the Longford Academies um, to, over the years um, and you ended up in Galway what brought you back to Athlone? Was it purely just a physical geography of being closer or or was there any other reason for kind of moving back to Athlone when you did? Um, I Obviously, because I went through the ranks in Longford, my ETP setup would have been Athlone. So Tommy Hewitt, the manager now, is that was he was actually the manager of the ETP setup. So I always kind of had a good relationship with him and I liked what he was about and the atmosphere that he created within the team. And then I just guess I thought like obviously the being closer to home helps, but I thought that Athlone would definitely benefit uh, Lee and I in getting to where we want to be as players. So that definitely played a part. It's rare, I suppose, for someone to get to, get to play at this level with a sibling. But what's it like having her in the squad? Kind of your older sister. She's about a year older than you. So, uh, are you tight? Are, are you fight? Or is there a, a good relationship between you? You've played a lot together over the years. Yeah, look, I think we're always going to be each other's worst enemies and biggest fans at the same time. So, yeah, it's good to have a bigger sister there. You're well, you're well able to fight your own corner as well. To be fair to you. <laughs> Um, in terms of, I suppose, the season ahead, obviously, uh, Dizzy, we mentioned Catherine Heinemann has a, brings a, a raft of experience. Uh, she's got a handful of Northern Ireland caps in there as well. Adding someone like that into a squad, um, it must make a, a, f- a fairly positive influence in terms of the, the experience she brings. Yeah, definitely. I think that's something we were lacking last year, maybe a bit against the bigger teams like Pima and Shells, is that we didn't have that experience. But I think she brings a lot of her knowledge that we she can pass on to us. So I think it's a healthy medium then having the younger ones, but also you experience thrown in the mix. What's the hope for the year ahead? Um, We're kind of just going to concentrate from now on the Shells game in a fortnight and just take each game as it comes to us. Because I think with a team like us, we're constantly improving. So there's no here say where we're going to be. And I suppose if you look at the, the club from the outside, Athlone's been through a, a fairly tough couple of years on the, the bigger picture end of things in the, in the club and the boys' teams or the men's teams have been kind of rooted to the bottom of the first division. There seems to have been a big push this year. Uh, I, no more than what we just had a conversation about shells. How much of a, an effect does that have on, on the girls' setup within the club? Are you aware of what's going on at underage level within the boys' side or at senior level on the boys' side doesn't make any difference to you at all in terms of how you prepare for your season? Yeah, look, we're one club, but we're two different teams. So I think it's kind of kept that way. Like, obviously, um, it's great to have the men's team there and that we can interact with them. But at the same time, they do their business, we do ours. So it is like, obviously... We'd love to see them doing well and vice versa, but we're our own priority. So it doesn't really necessarily affect us, per se. Yeah. Um, Steph, I don't know if you have anything to do. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's similar to what you said about shells, isn't it? I think you need to focus on yourselves. But I do think, like, going forward, having the affiliation with the men's sides can definitely help these clubs improve as well, you know, hopefully as you say, they can help them in whatever way they can. But I do think it's it's always going to be a case of you look after yourself first and then obviously you support the men's side too. But I think, as I said, it's a positive thing to see the clubs getting the women's sides involved and keeping them kind of together as one. You know, I think it will have a, a bearing going further down the line. But I think, as we said with Shells, it's it's all about kind of focusing on yourself for the start of the season and, and making sure you do well within the Women's National League, I'm sure. 
Of course, um, we did also mention about uh, some of the players that have come in from the Northwest. There's also been a fairly big influx from the West itself in terms of Galway. Yourself and Leah came 12 months ago this year. I think it's three or four people have, have made the move from Galway in. Rhea McPhilbin, I know, signed during the week. Abigail Ronan came in uh, earlier in the year, along with Kelsey Monroe, two players who were at Sligo previously. Um do they make a, a big difference in terms of, I suppose, what you're bringing from other teams in? Uh, Kaylee, uh, Caitlin Kyo is another one that's been on, on my radar for a while. She impressed under-17 level a couple of years ago and had a couple of, uh, I suppose, sniffs of Ireland teams and Ireland squads uh, at under-19 level as well. But um, what's the, I suppose, the expectation for the club? Like, do, Can you uh, move on from that kind of bottom half of the table and to really challenge uh, maybe the likes of Galway and Cork for those kind of lower lower top half of the table spots? Yeah, definitely. I think that's going to be a big aim for us this year. Like in our preseason games, we have been playing like good test teams. Um, we played Galway, home and away. And um, there wasn't much in the game. Like obviously there was weather factors and stuff like that but and we played payment then during the week and like close the compared to last year like close the gap completely so i think with a team like us we have used we're constantly wanting to improve constantly trying to get up the ranks i think that is um gonna really benefit us in the long run yeah and of course uh, on a personal note you're also doing the leaving cert this year um what's it like doing the leaving cert at the moment because do you have exams do you not have exams do you have to study what's the situation yeah i actually had a biology exam today and an english one tomorrow so the training straight after so we'll see how it goes <laughs> and you fit us with us in as well fair play to you <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, uh, thanks very much for joining us and the best of luck, I suppose, with the exams first and foremost, but I suppose uh, through the the season ahead, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how those new players gel into that side of that loan. And I think there's uh, good things ahead for that squad. So thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I hope we got you. I think we got you out of school a little bit early today as well. So <laughs> um, I apologize to your teachers for us on that front. But uh, thanks very much for joining us, Kayla best Brady. Best of luck for the season, Kayla. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. Just one of the talented players coming through at all of the clubs in the country over the last couple of years. Steph, I suppose it's a kind of a vote of confidence in the whole under-17 and now under-19 structure that's been brought in by the league uh, to really allow these girls to develop at their own proper age grade. Because you would have been playing senior football at that 15, 16 years of age. Now to let them kind of mature at the right pace, it really does benefit them when they come through to, to adult level at 18, 19. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's great to see players that getting the opportunity to play within the Women's National League. Um, I touched on it last week and the week before about ourselves. We've got some very good young players coming through. And I think, as you mentioned, playing within the, the underage kind of Women's National League setups is definitely a stepping stone, the right stepping stone for them to be able to come up and then perform when it comes to Women's National League. Because it is a big step up, I think, if if you're kind of playing at youth football and then come up to, to women's senior football, it's a big step up into the Women's National League. So, it's great to see, as I said, these girls being given the platform and, and the stepping stones along the way and then to be able to give, be given that opportunity to play in their teams within the Women's National League. It's great to see. And, and I'm excited to see some of these players because some of them I only kind of hear about their names. I haven't seen them play yet. So, again, I'm just excited to see what they can bring to the games and, and what they can do when they do play uh, within the Women's National League. So it's an exciting year. Yeah, no, I do know some of the players we mentioned in that interview with her because they were they were either players or coaches within the Sligo Rovers setup when I was there a couple of seasons ago. It's they really will add an extra dimension to that athlone side. You got to play against them on Friday night. What are your thoughts? Yeah, look good. I think we touched on it before. I think um, they're a team who last year they kind of had come into the league and were trying to get themselves set up defensively to play. Difficult to be always going to give you a battle, always going to make it hard for you. But I have to say, on Friday night, they were excellent, really, really good, set up very well, didn't really give us much opportunity to play the way we want to play. Um, we scored a goal from a corner. and um, We had a few opportunities in the second half where we did play some good bits of football and that. But yeah, look, they're a good team. They're set up really well. Um, there was a girl on the left wing, I'm not sure of her name, but she was a good counter-attacking option for them coming in off the wing. And we're an obviously very good player. I've got to see her a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. So, exciting talents coming through and and I think as I said they're they're being managed and coached the right way as well they seem to have a good setup and and as I said before I feel like I'm 
I'm talking the same way about every team, but it just seems to be that every team is getting more competitive and, and it's great to see. And, and hopefully, as I said, it means more uh, competitive games that are going to be shown live across the streams and, it, and it'll give more people an opportunity to see what the Women's National League is all about. Because for me, there's nothing, wor nothing worse than when you see teams getting beaten by big score lines. Nobody wants to see that. No one wants to play in those games. Obviously, even me as a striker scoring goals in them games, you almost feel bad for scoring goals against teams when, when, it's, when they're down and out. So for me, I think it's going to be a very competitive league, which is great to see. And, and it's just, it's an exciting uh, prospect. The, the league this year is going to be, uh, hopefully, a lot of entertaining games and, and a lot of good teams competing. Yeah, I think, and you mentioned the the standard and the gap between underage and senior. I think year on year with extra talent coming up and retaining the talent that's there playing a couple of years older maybe than they would have five or six or ten years ago. Um, I think that standard is getting higher and higher and that gap is probably getting higher and higher. So I think the under-19s edition of that league and those divisions this year is going to help bridge that gap another another step, which is a huge benefit to everybody coming up through the ranks. Uh, I think that's pretty much all we have time for, Steph. But I want to ask you one thing before we finish up. Um, there was one thing that caught my attention on social media over the weekend, and that was the tweet from Katie Burdis. Um, about her mental health situation. Did you catch that? I did, yeah. Yeah, I retweeted it the other day, yeah. What's your thoughts on, on I suppose, what she had to say and, I suppose, how uh, how the reaction went, uh, considering, I suppose, the initiatives like Head in the Game that have come on board in, in terms of Irish football over the last few months and year? Oh, I think it's important that, and it's it's good to see her coming out and speaking about it because... I actually, strange enough, I've, I've spoke to Katie quite a few times on, on Instagram and, and a couple of social media things, just back and forth kind of things on different people's, on each of her stories. And she seems like a really lovely girl. And obviously you don't want to see anybody going through anything like that. And there's been issues like that for people within football. I've seen it myself. I've seen girls in, in, in dressing rooms who maybe don't talk and you can see them. They're not quite themselves. And it can be a difficult time or a different difficult to approach them and ask them what's wrong. And I think it's important now that, that people are aware of it and, and look, if you think somebody's down and not being themselves, just chat to them and try and approach them in the best way you think is possible to make sure that that they're okay and, and let them know, as, as people say, that it's okay not to be okay. You know, you've got someone to talk to. You're within a team. You're within people who really like you, people who who want to be there for you. So so use that to your benefit. And I think football for me is a great, or a great I suppose, outlet for, those, for players who are going through stuff like that. I think it can be difficult if you're by yourself. So... Look, I was, I have to say, without sounding corny, it was good to see her coming out and talking about it. I was going to say I'm proud of her, but I sound really old if I say that. But it is, <laughs> it's good to see see people kind of speaking up for, about it and speaking up about her own experiences in it. We've seen it with Claire Shine. She's come out and talked about it quite a bit and, and it helps other people. And I think when you're going through something like that, it's only when you talk about it that you realise there are a lot of other people going through similar situations. So yeah, all, all, I have to say all credit to her for, for speaking out about it. And it's great to see her being so happy and she looks to be really back to her old self and and enjoying life at the other so absolutely no i think it's uh, it's important as someone who's, who's walked that road in the past um i think it's important to, to be open and talk about it and share your feelings it mightn't be publicly like katie has done this week it might just be with a, a friend or a confidant or a parent or a teacher or a, a coach or somebody in your life just to just have those little words to somebody and you'd be amazed how much of a positive reaction you'll get back and uh, you have a people have much more of an impact than maybe they they understand themselves. Steph, it's been a fantastic week. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's getting closer, only about 10 or 11 days to the first round of games. And uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about. We might put you on notice, but we're going to ask you to to predict where teams are going to finish up next year. We might let you take Piedmont out of the league table uh, just so you can refuse to buy us. So I, I'll assume you're putting them top of the table in your head at least. So um, we might ask you to sort the other eight teams out in the order you think they're going to finish in just That's so that you can somebody a good reason to give you a little kick at some point during yeah. the season. Uh, listen, thanks as always. It's been a pleasure and uh, we'll chat to you again next week. Thanks, Brefni. See you next week, guys.